So, if you like to read, I told you I'd talk to you for a few minutes. Uh, the Second Corinthians, uh, the fifth chapter. Second Corinthians, fifth chapter, the seventh verse. If you like to stand for the reading of the Word of God, not to reverence me. I've always felt I felt well in the last several years. I felt to do this. I used to be one of them. Uh, make the remark. Well, do you always stand up when you're reading your Bible? And, uh, you know, then when God shows you something, it's a little bit different. And He shows you something, it's a little bit different, folks. Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, the seventh verse. I appreciate everybody. And, and uh, hope everybody has a lot of long suffering tonight. Seems like i got a lot to read and, and uh, everything. If I could preach to you just for a little while, or however long the Lord allows, uh, about the judgment seat of God. And I just didn't uh, get up from the supper table and put on clean clothes and come down here uh, and just Bible file open. You know, they're a message for this certain group of people. Eric come and preached so good last night. I thought he did. And it was for that certain group of people. He put time into that. And if a man puts the time in, it's for a certain group of people at that certain time, at certain date. A lot of people don't see it that way, but I do. I really do. The seventh verse of the fifth chapter of Second Corinthians. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. For for we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of Him. For we must all appear. Now listen at that tenth verse, folks. This is going to happen to everybody. Everybody. All kindreds, tongues, language, colors, creeds, nationalities. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Join us with a word of prayer. Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity, Lord. We thank you and we honor you, Lord, to be in thy house, Father. I pray, Lord, you bless this service, the remainder of this, but I come to you, Father, asking where I failed you in this day and this life, Father, that you purge me in that precious blood that flowed down Calvary's tree, Father. Make me a vessel of honor, not of dishonor. Help me be that overcomer, Father. I pray you'll not move the good Holy Ghost, knowing in the most definitely take it, Father. Lord, anoint the people's mind, Father. Anoint this altar in the precious name of Jesus. And amen. Amen. I borrowed Eric's chair. And amen. I, I preached this and uh, before. And if I could use that, that's the judgment seat of God, folks. And amen. One of these days, we're going to have to sit on that. Amen. We'll have to sit on that one of these days. Uh, amen. It, uh, and give account. And he, we won't have to. Uh, folks, we'll sit on that and we'll be so humbled. Amen. If we're ready to go, we'll be so humbled. Uh, amen. Uh, we won't hardly be able to, we won't be able to say nothing. Amen. But if we're not ready to go, you think about it, folks. Uh, the Bible says, All oh, I shall uh, see the appearing of the Son of Man, but only the pure in heart shall see God. Uh, amen. When I sit on that judgment seat of God, folks, I want to have my heart and everything uh, right with God. Uh, I want to have a clear conscience with God. Folks, that'll mean everything to have a clear conscience with God. Uh, uh, not having nothing between you and God. Uh, uh, think about that. I, I use a little parable. Me and Brenda's got a dog we've had 17 and a half years or something. Uh, we'd be gone. We'd come back. Uh, we wouldn't have to look for nothing done, Roseanne, or whatever. We'd walk to the door. Uh, uh, there would be his tail. He's got a little tail about that long. He'd be clamping his ears down. Uh, he had a guilty look up on his face, folks. Uh, amen. That's just the way it is. That's me and you. If we got that guilt in our heart, uh, the Bible says they are therefore no more condemnation, those which are in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, folks, it don't matter what you started with. Uh, it's what you end up at the very end. Uh, when you sit in that seat right there, that's what will ever matter. It won't matter uh, uh, how much land, wealth, cattle, or whatever you may have in this life. Uh, uh, what you When you sit in that seat, uh, and I'll go back just a little bit farther, honey, when you feel that sting of death uh, uh, come up on your body, honey, uh, if you ain't got what it takes to go to the city of God, uh, you'll never make it, folks. But you think about uh, what I'm preaching to you tonight here. Uh, you think about what would hold you back in that seat. Uh, 
Honey, if death come up on you going back to Bria, or going up Red Lick Road, and you had to sit in this seat tonight, or whatever's going through your mind right now, that shortcoming you got in your life is going through your mind right now, folks. Honey, would keep you from the city of God. Once again, to know to do good and do it not, it's sin unto you. It ain't sin to me, James, or whatever. That's why it says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Think about it, folks. It's more than what a lot of people think. They have an experience and they think that's going to keep them the rest of their life. Honey, you'll have to build up on that foundation. you had have to build up on that solid foundation. Amen. Jesus Christ, you'll have to add every day to your faith. You'll have to add every day. Amen. It's like me and Brenda. We built a house ten years ago. About this time, we started a little bit earlier. I've done had to make repairs. That's the same way with me and you folks. On our journey, we're going to stump our toe. We're going to have shortcomings. Amen. We're going to make mistakes. I tell you why, because we got this flesh wrapped around our bones. That's where the weakness is. Amen. That's why it says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Think about it, folks. They're an answer to everything in the Word of God. Honey, if there are anything to keep you back from going to the city of God, honey, I was sitting in that judgment seat of God. Honey, it'll be this flesh. That's what holds you back. Honey, that's what a key at the end, folks, is that flesh. Amen. That flesh will want to do things. You'll lean to your own understanding. You'll lean to your own ways. Honey, and that's what will cause you to be lost at the end. Amen. Amen. I don't want to cross nobody up or whatever. Amen. You think about that where it says once appointed a man to die and after this to judgment. You think about it. It ain't got nine lives like a cat. We got one opportunity to make it through this life, folks. Honey, and stand in front of Almighty God. We got an instruction book right here tells us what to do and what not to do. It's like you buy something at Walmart. A lot of times I can't hardly follow them instructions. Amen. I start putting it together myself. You come up with a big pile of parts over here. You throw in a coffee can with the rest of the, the screws you got in the house. Uh, amen. If you follow that instruction book, every piece had a place it should go. Uh, that's the same way with serving God. Uh, amen. you got to grow in that grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Uh, uh, taking baby steps, honey, grow in the grace. Uh, amen. You ain't going to be a full-grown Christian in two months or three months. Uh, honey, there are people that say they're still growing. You'll grow uh, till the day you leave this world, folks. Uh, honey, but be ready to go to that judgment seat of God. Yes. Think about not making it, folks. Honey, there a preacher right in this vicinity has preached longer than I have. Amen. He's preached longer than I've been alive in this world, folks. Uh, honey, and I worry about that man's soul. Uh, he don't fish. He don't hunt. He don't have no uh, hobbies or nothing like that. He's went to church for years. Uh, and I'm concerned about that man's soul. Uh, when he has to sit on that judgment seat of God, uh, I feel God has showed him what to do, what not to do. Uh, and he's going his own way, doing his own thing. Uh, wouldn't that be a shame? Honey, serve God 50, 60, 70 years uh, and get right down to the end of the race and be lost and undone. Uh, honey, in Jesus Christ, they depart from me, friend. Uh, I never knew you. Uh, think about it, folks. Uh, think about that. Bind him hand and foot and cast him in outer darkness. Think about that. The judgment's coming to me and you quicker than we think. Amen. Quicker than me and you think. Uh, amen. Think about it. If He's not real down in our heart, folks, how can we make Him real to this lost and dying world? If we're not living a life, amen, before this lost and dying world, uh, uh, think about it, folks. Uh, if we're not living a life He's not real in our life, uh, it's just like doing something. If you don't enjoy, uh, enjoy doing what you're doing, uh, amen, it's just a job, it's just a burden to you. Amen. Come into the house of God. If it's just a burden, it ought to be a joy, honey. Uh, uh, come into the house of God in fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Uh, hear the spiritual hymns of Zion. Uh, hear the Word of God preach. It ought to be a joy, honey. We ought to be willing, uh, honey, to get there early. Folks have a desire to come to the house of God because uh, judgment's coming to my door. It's coming to your door. Uh, ready or not, He's a coming after a while, folks. Uh, a spot, wrinkle, or blemish or any such thing. Uh, honey, it's caught up on your garment. That's your soul. Uh, honey, and He'll give you an opportunity to get it tucked here. If you don't, it'll be your fault. It'll be your fault. Honey, it won't be my fault. Don't blame it on me or Johnny Lee or nobody else. Hey, man, you think about it, folks. It'll mean everything to be ready to sit on that judgment seat of God. 
Honey, what's going through your mind? And, and uh, he never just had me come here tonight and, and uh, sli- uh, slobber and talk fast or whatever. Uh, honey, he sent me on a mission. He sent me on a journey, honey. There's somebody sold that's weighing in the balance here tonight. Uh, and what's went through your mind already, folks, could hold you back. Uh, uh, think about, honey, uh, that great big uh, spiritual report card. I talk about that a whole lot. Uh, you get in front of him and he opens that up and he'll say, Sold, I told you to do this, uh, not to do this. I gave you a word. I gave you a mind. I've spoke to your heart. Uh, and you push that away. Uh, you've done away with it. You put it on the back burner. I'll take care of that later. Uh, I'll do that later on down the road. Lord, why do you let this one do it? Uh, why can that do it? And I can't. Honey, he said, my sheep know my voice. Uh, and a stranger they won't follow. Honey, he's a dealing with somebody's heart here tonight. Uh, honey, to change their ways, whatever they're doing. Uh, honey, if it's me, I want to be the first one to the altar. Uh, I don't want to blame it on everybody else. If I'm the one that's guilty of got my hand caught in that spiritual cookie jar, I want to be the very man to get it right. I called a man yesterday, honey, this little man right here. I love him. He preached Sunday morning. It condemned my heart. The Lord dealt with my heart. I had to call a man and make some things right. And I told that man, honey, I want to go to heaven. Apostle Paul said, when I do good, he was always present. I tried to talk to that man and... He hung him thumbs in them galaxies and reared back like holier than now. Amen. It's, it's required of him now. I done I done what I know to do. Amen. I got down and saw God. And he showed me what to do, Patsy. Honey, when I get on that judgment seat of God, honey, I don't want Him to bring that back to me. Uh, honey, so and so day. Uh, amen. That little preacher down there, he preached, and I showed you that Sunday morning uh, about twelve thirty or whatever it might have been. Uh, I showed you what to do, and you said, "Well, uh, he done this, he done that, or whatever." Honey, he deals with your heart. You better be the man or woman. Go get it tucked care of because on judgment day, honey, it'll be there. I guarantee it. Hey, just somebody in Brenda's family that she knows or I know she's related to. Of course she is. It's her family, but... Yes. Anyhow, she was with them years ago. Uh, stopped by a certain place. Folks, the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. Uh, amen. Uh, stopped by a certain place. They didn't want to go in there and get a certain habit thing. Uh, and I'm not a habit preacher. Uh, she said, oh no, I don't want to go in there. I wanted Brenda to do it. And Brenda wouldn't go in there and buy it. Honey, God condemned her several years ago. Uh, he just didn't take that back. Well, I'll just forget about that. Uh, I raised that spiritual rug up and throw it up under there. Uh, honey, He condemned her heart with that years ago and she don't get that took care of, judgment day will catch that. Hey Amen. I don't have to have a woman to preach on or a television or a coffee pot or a ceiling fan. Honey, there's so much in this Word of God condemn your heart. If you try your best to serve God, that will be brought right up to that person I was just talking about. And God will bring that back to them. It might be on their deathbed, but He will bring it back to them and give them an opportunity to get it took care of. A lot of people don't see it that way, but I do, folks. He'll bring it back. He loves you. Honey, He loves you and He's not lost one, folks. I ain't preaching no strange doctrine. Honey, He didn't save you to lose you. Honey, but if you're lost, it's your fault. If you don't make it to the city of God, you're the one that keeps yourself out of there. Honey, if you sit down on that judgment seat and that great big spiritual record cards opened up, I never did make good marks going to school. I wish I had. I wish I got a good education. I leave Kingston Cool School House. They hit them little yellow envelopes. James, you know what I'm talking about. Coming down Bobtown Stretch, I was thinking what I got when I got home. I didn't get time out my cell phone, a DS or Wii or whatever that is laid to the side you need to do better. Uh, honey, I got a thrashing. I mean, I'm good. Not a spanking. I got a whooping. But you, I tell you what, honey, a spiritual thrashing from God uh, through your disobedience, He'll give you a spiritual thrashing. Honey, that's the worst hurt uh, that I've ever had in my life. You'll lay in the bed and cry. Say, Lord, let me get out of this. Uh, I'll get it took care of. I'll go a little bit farther. I'm talking about my experiences. Several years ago, my nephew, he was just a boy, and all of them that was with us, we was a deer hunting. They was all lost and undone. I got several places. I hope y'all plan on listening a while. Hey, man, I don't preach most time very long, but hey, man, we was uh, way up in the Henry County, and uh, I was just goofing off. There's a big flock of turkeys running through there, and it wasn't turkey season, and, and they was way over through there. You couldn't have killed them uh, 150 times more if you'd shot at them 150 times. And, I raised up, 
The beat of the gun just covered the whole turkey up. I went boom, and his old black powder gun, he had to duck down, smoke, and a lot of these men know what I'm talking about. It took off running. They was a big herd of them, a flock of them. They took off running. That one fell over. Scared me to death. <laughs> oh Lord, I was just gonna shoot and make them run. Hadn't seen no deer and you know, want to break the monotony of nothing going on and I went over there and got it. I don't believe in killing nothing, letting it lay unless it's a snake or a coyote or something of that nature that you can't eat and went and got it and me and my dad we dressed it and put it in the cooler, went back and got in the deer stand that evening. You talking about a young man's heart getting condemned. Oh darn it was just a turkey. Now I don't care if it was an ant. I don't care if it's a lizard. Honey, I set up at the air stand the most miserable human being that ever drawed breath, folks. He showed me. I said, Lord, if you let me get out of here and not get caught with this, I wouldn't eat it. If I eat it, it tastes like a piece of rubber anyway, the way he condemned my heart. I gave it to somebody else. And uh, I said, You let me get out of this situation, Lord. I'll never do that again. I ain't saying nothing against nobody else. That's your business. And I got back to camp that night, and I looked them every one in the eye and told them, I said, I apologize, that was a pitiful example and a pitiful light to y'all. I'm a born-again Christian. You know, they all looked at me, you know, big eyes, like, oh, and I said, no, i got to do this. Yeah. If I hadn't done what God purposed my heart, Teresa, judgment day would have caught it. Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee it. I, what is, that's crazy, there. The Bible says it takes a foolish thing to confound the wise to prove. Honey, that might not have been for me. That might have been for them three men that was there with me. And God, I told them. And it was hard. Somebody that's not spiritual, it's hard a lot of times to have a spiritual conversation with and, and things like that. And it's about like swallowing this Bible stand here. And I got it down. You know, I was walking back, edge of dark at them from the tear stand. And boy, I was just thinking, how am I going to put this or whatever? Uh, and, and if you're honest hearted, honey, he'll give you the very words to say yes, to get out of a situation. Let me read a little bit more. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Amen. You think about that, folks. You think about that. Amen. He'll bring it to your mind. He'll bring it to your remembrance that you can get it took care of. Uh, you make a mistake, He just ain't going to let you hang out there this dangling mid air like you're a little puppet. Honey, the God I'm serving is not like that. He'll bring, if you bow, bow your knees and be honest hearted with Him, He'll bring stuff up uh, uh, from years ago. I talked about it down there at church. I feel to tell it again. Uh, a lot of times I don't tell a lot of stuff. A uh, young man uh, with. My sister's first husband, I might have told it here, but I failed to tell it again. Uh, he ran out of gas. I walked up the road, got him a gallon of gas. He told me to tell them to, he'd bring it back. And uh, that was 30-some years ago. and was driving by there to go to Brother Leon Center's house, pick him up. Uh, uh, Shirley knows Leon. He was going to church with us. And uh, I'd drive by there, and that man's been dead for years and years. Adam, I'd look over, and that gallon of gas would go through my mind. That man's been gone for years. And I got... Home is a few Christmases, a couple of Christmases go, and hey man, I got to praying and talking to the Lord, and He showed me. I said, Lord, how can I get this took care of? I told that man, the Lord condemned my heart, and I said, Lord, how can I get this took care of? That man's boy, which he's older than me, up in his feet, well, probably up in his sixties, got kids about my age. His son come right before me, James. If I called the name, you'd know him. And I. The Lord showed me exactly what to do. Folks, if you pray and seek God, I'm no more special than nobody else. I'm the least. I got Brenda to pour the milk out, what was it, and something else. Rinse that milk jug out. I went to Shell Mart and got a full gallon of gas and went up and knocked on that man's uh, son's door. And I told him, no, 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 no. I said, honey, I'm not taking this gas. You can pour it out on the fence row, burn the fence row, whatever. Honey, God showed me what to do. And every time that man sees me, I'm not bragging on me, but I'm bragging what's inside of me. That man thinks about that. I've preached funerals and that man's been there. He thinks about that. I told him that God condemned my heart, told him the whole situation, that I wanted to be obedient to God because I don't want that on my record on Judgment Day. Darren, it was just a gallon of gasoline. Don't matter what it was. God showed me to do it, folks. If I hadn't done it, Judgment Day would have caught it. That judgment seat of God had been brought to my remembrance. Folks, it's a lot closer than a lot of people think. It's a lot closer. Amen. It surely is. Let me read another place or two. Amen. 
For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that He might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why thou? But why doest thou judge thy brother? Or why doest thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or occasion to fall in his brother's way. And you hear that a whole lot. Uh, if you think your brother's got it all against you, go to him and him alone. And a lot of times we try to justify that. He's the one that done me wrong. Uh, you really look at that Scripture, Brother Eric. Uh, it says if you think your brother's got it all against you, go to him and him alone. Uh, and God will make a way for your escape, folks. He'll put no more than you can bear. He'll make a way for your escape. He'll help you. A lot of times it'll be hard. It'll be once again like swallowing this Bible stand uh, to have that conversation. But if He deals with your heart, Folks, you have to do it to be obedient, to be in the center of God's will. If you don't, once again, judgment seat, uh, it'll catch you, folks. Uh, if you get sincere with God, you'll do everything He wants you to do. Uh, if you want to be a servant of Christ, uh, it's like uh, me and Brenda drives a school bus. We have to do what the boss says. Uh, uh, Skip Bent tells us what to do, where to go, uh, whatever. we got to do it uh, to get that paycheck at the end of the month. That's the only reason I'm there. Uh, I don't really enjoy it that much. Brenda does, but anyhow... To get that paycheck at that great and noble day, we have to be that old uh, servant uh, that obey every commandment, every word, every statue, uh, everything He deals with our heart about. We uh, have to be that servant of obedience. Now my boss, once again, I ain't tooting my horn. I've seen him last year. Probably ain't seen him twice since then. Go in his office for evaluation. He said, "I like to have a hundred more like you, Darren." He said, "He said I don't never hear nothing." I said, "I don't hear nothing out of you, you, and you don't hear nothing out of me." And I like it that way. And he said, "I do too." I said, "I pick kids up, take them to school, not worrying about somebody else's parking spot, windows rattling, nothing like that." I told him, "I said all the buses is yellow. I drive one. It don't matter what one it is. I go do my job. I go home, honey. It's the same way God wants me and you to be, folks." Uh, he wants to do our, uh, us to do our job as a born-again Christian, uh, uh, live according to this Word of God. It ain't uh, uh, for uh, a certain person's private interpretation. Uh, we have to live according to the Word of God. If it condemns us, uh, if it hurts us to the marrow of the bone, we have to do it to make it to the city of God. But we get sincere and honest-hearted with God. We want to, folks. We will want to so we can make it to that judgment seat of God. We will want to. I used to think when I started going to churches, a bunch of rules and regulations and things, honey, once you get on a party with God, you'll do what He'll want you to do. A lot of times we are kind of say, Lord, ah, it's awful hard, Lord. Why me, Lord? I was in Sand Gap, Kentucky one time. We was in the, one of the best meetings ever was. Uh, hey man, uh, people getting the blessings of God. They were shouting and dancing and running the aisles. And uh, the blessings of God was just raining down in that place that night. Uh, in the back of the church, the Lord dealt with my heart to get on my hands and knees and crawl to the altar and pray. And I looked around and said, Lord... Why me, Lord? Why can't you put it on? The... And I got down and it just condemned my heart. He said, condemn my heart. I got on my hands and knees and I crawled to that altar and I prayed and sought God. It was three or four years later. There was a young lady come up to me and said, Darren, you done that that night. That helped me. It took a while. You know, and I'm not bragging on me. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm the least here tonight. But folks, God dealt with my heart to do that. He deals with your heart to do something because you lost neighbor, uh, uh, the person that you work with or whatever, folks. If we don't do it, that person could die lost and undone. Well, I didn't like him anyway. I didn't like what he said or whatever. Uh, I, I'm not David Ballard. Uh, uh, I don't like to hear bad talking things, uh, but if I can't overcome a little bit of bad talk, I ain't talking about taking the Lord's name in vain, but them little by words, and I don't like to hear them. And I ain't saying they're wrong. Honey, if I ain't got enough God to overcome that, what about when a real trial comes my way? What about when a real test comes my way? Uh, uh, what about when somebody gets in my face and starts calling me one of them bad names? Have I got enough, honey, to be that overcomer? Uh, like a brother up the road here several years ago, uh, different ones might know him. Uh, he's been right in this church. They 
the man walked up and slapped him on one side, and he told him, he said, that felt good to you, do the other side, and he slapped the, uh, slapped the slobber out of the other side, folks. I mean, that'd take God, wouldn't it? That would take God to stand there and let somebody slap both of your jaws. Up. I mean, just ring them, and this man wasn't a meek and humble man growing up. Uh, he was one that fight two or three. Uh, he, he was a rowdy type person, but honey, God in heaven can make the difference in your life if you let Him. I don't want to be tempted that way. I don't want to be tried that way. I don't want that. I don't want that. Lord, please uh, make a way for my escape before that happens. Now, folks, He shows us something. When we don't do it, judgment's going to catch us. People, just, There's so many people in the church world that we're living in today, uh, they have the experience with God, and, and I feel in my heart that they get saved. And, uh, amen. And then they get on that rock and they, and they think they've got it whooped, Patsy. Uh, they don't add to their faith. They don't add nothing. Uh, at the Word of God, them fruits of the Spirit, they don't add to them. They think they've got it made because they had experience at one time. I just don't understand that, Roseanne, because uh, judgment's going to catch them after a while. If they ain't done everything that they know to do, folks. Uh, honey, that book will be opened up and we'll be judged accordingly. I didn't write it. We're going to be judged accordingly. People say, well, my, your works, this, that, or whatever. Folks, once again, know to do good and do it not. It's sin unto you. Honey, you'll, you'll have to work. It says work out your own salvation with fear and tremble in and a lot of people say, well, it ain't by works, honey. You'll never do enough to be born into the city of God. Amen. That precious blood flowed freely down Calvary. Honey, He said, whosoever will, let him come take the water of life freely. We'll have to come and lay our life down and be washed and purged with that precious blood. Then after that moment, folks, that's when our work begins. That's when we are a vessel of honor, when we're washed and cleansed and purged, where we can walk in that brand new newness of life. We can, like that song says, i got my a foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Folks, that's when you can do it after your sins is under the blood. Not one minute before that, but after that, folks, we can meet the conditions and start serving and working and doing for God. When we get our sins under the blood. Folks, there are nothing no, no greater, no preciouser than the blood of Jesus Christ. Honey, there are nothing this side of the city of God that can wash a man's uh, sins away. Uh, people can preach the Holy Ghost, and uh, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. Folks, you'll never receive the Holy Ghost unless your sins is under the blood of Jesus Christ. You'll never receive it. I know I'm off on a different limb, but that's all right. I'll be back. I know where I'm at. Amen. Think about that precious blood, folks. He said you cannot put new wine in old bottles. And that's uh, symbolic to the blood, folks. That Spirit cannot come in here to that blood. It happens all at one time. About 19 years ago, down on 1016, hey man, that blood come right out. One drop of that precious blood come out of the portals of heaven and wash this extra drug addict, wash me clean, and that Spirit come in and made its abode. Right then. Right then. I wasn't a lost man. I was a saved man. I don't care what nobody preaches. Honey, I was a saved young man. I was a drug-free young man right then. I could have went to the Brea Hospital. I could have got a drug test, a pee in a cup, blood test, whatever. I could have done it right then. Honey, when the Lord does something, He does it right, Teresa. This what He done for you. When He done it, He done it right. He don't do it halfway, part of the way or whatever. He gives me and you a 100% opportunity, folks, to sit in that judgment seat not having no condemnation in our heart. Think about that. That's why the church world is the way it is. People staggers in, don't pray three minutes in three weeks, comes in, thanks God owes them something. Folks, He don't owe you nothing. He paid the ultimate price on Calvary. The ultimate price on Calvary is what He paid. That we can have a right to the tree of life. There's no excuse, folks, that I could get everybody stand up in a line and walk up here, honey, and sit in this chair and you pray and search your heart. If there's something in your heart, honey, you need to make yourself to the your way to the altar and pray and say, Lord, this thing that went through my mind, I want it took care of the night. If you take it back out to this church door, folks, and it on your mind and death comes up on you, that'll be the first thing you'll be judged by.
I believe that a hundred percent. Lord, I wouldn't hurt nobody for love nor money. But I'm going to preach the very thing the Lord gives me if I have to preach it over on Blue Lick, where I pay the taxes. I did that one thing. I told a man yesterday, I said, people might call me a lot of things or whatever, accuse me or whatever. But I ain't no liar and I ain't no thief, folks. I've heard people stand up, preachers stand up and lie to the people just to get that big love offering or that big salary or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. Helping somebody. There's nothing whatsoever, honey. But it's telling the people what they want to hear. So you can have that pocketbook line, stand by the back door and what a good job you've done, brother. And they've done forgot where you read, what you preached on, or anything. They're used to that, just having that form of godliness, but denying the power of. Judgment's going to catch us, folks. It's going to catch us after a while. Let me read one more place. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whatsoever thou art, that ju- art that judges, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteousness of judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patience Continue in well-doing, seek for a glory and honor, immortality, and eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Think about that, folks. He's got a lot of long-suffering and forbearance with me and you. And He knows mine and your heart. And I've heard that thought out there so loosely in testimony. Oh, the Lord knows my heart. And then want to justify their self right then. Folks, we'll never justify ourselves. If we're doing anything contrary to the Word of God, we'll never, ever be able to justify ourselves. The goodness, helping your neighbor, the little lady down the road bought her a sack of grocery, paid her light bill, mowed her yard, stacked wood on her porch, or anything of that nature, folks. Honey, uh, we can't use that excuse on that great and noble day. Amen. He knows her heart. The Bible said He knows the very intense and thought and discerner of the heart. Got that all seeing eye. Hold the water in the hollow of his hand, created the heaven and earth, spoke all this into existence, and there's nothing that mean you could hide from him. We can go in the deepest cave, we can go in the mammoth cave, we can go wherever. And honey, that great big all seeing eye can look right out of the portals of heaven and see me and you what we're doing. Knows and thoughts of our heart. He knows the very thoughts, folks, of our heart. Now you think about that. Then people play in church. They're playing church. I'm not saying nobody in here is. I'm not saying that. I'm not throwing a pocket full of rocks. Uh, the people's playing church, folks. Know to do good and do it not. It's sin unto you. That's one of my favorite scriptures. It is. Know to do good. Do it not. It's sin unto you. A lot of times, and I've been guilty of it, the preacher gets to preach and you get to look out of corny eye. Is it this one over here? Oh, it's over there. Look at that red face. Look at them nostrils back there. That's who it is. And me, the very person that's guilty. I ain't trying to be a comedian. It's the truth, folks. I've told this a lot of different times. Me and Brenda used to go to church in Jackson County. Hey, man, the man get anointed to preach. Make altar calm. Boy, I'd be the very person. My hand caught in that spiritual cookie jar. Condemned. And I'm guilty. Boy, out the, out the door I'd go, slam the door and rush in dust, fly and hang down the road, just matter in a wet hen, back to Berea, Kentucky. Get home and get thinking about him praying. I'd be the very person that was wrong, folks. God trying to use some mouthpiece to deal with my heart, to get my life in line. There, there, you've got to add some stuff to it. Uh, a lot of people think that after you get saved, it's all over with. That's when you 
able to work. Once again, folks, that's when you're able to work. That's like I had to go through uh, to drive a school bus. Uh, Ruby and things drove a school bus. I had to go through classes. I had to get my CDM. I get my permit. Go through classes for a month and things before I could drive the bus. When I went over and got my CDL, I could have, you know, went around and said, "Me bus drivers, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I had the credentials. I got my license. I still wasn't a hundred percent. I had to do a little bit more training and everything. That's the same way, folks. We're a soldier on the battlefield for the Lord. We're a soldier on the battlefield for the Lord, and our obedience, folks, will end us in a wonderful place after a while. What about them children of disobedience, folks? That's what that wrath is for. It ain't for God's people. A lot of people don't like to hear that, and they they kind of twist up and frown on you. Honey, He didn't create that wrath uh, uh, for His people, folks. That's the children of disobedience. You think about it. But we can see it. We can see it in that judgment seat of God after a while and not have no condemnation in their heart. And you know where you stand with God right now. And I'm going to set that chair right there as they get ready to get us a song. And you don't have to raise your hand, and I don't believe in that stuff, trying to humiliate you, uh, raise a bunch of hands, or nothing of that nature. Folk, how's your heart with God? Uh, has anything been said here tonight that's condemned your heart? That's went through your mind, having all against you, brother? Not doing what God told you to do? You go in some words that God's told you not to go, but you let James Thomas go there, and he's my neighbor, Lord. He's not going up there in James' house uh, beating on James or nothing. He's not condemning his heart. He's condemning your heart. Well, Lord, they things that I don't do, that, that I don't condemn nobody else about. I don't go to the movie house. Mel and them wanted to go, and I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not one of them. No, no, I'm not one of them. Don't get me wrong. Lord dealt my heart a long time ago, and I'll not go into that. I ain't saying it's wrong. Take them children, go over and watch a good movie, clean movie. Lord, deal with my heart. I'm a servant to whom I obey. Melanie didn't want to go the other day. She had some tickets. She's got some worse. There'd been nothing wrong. Going over to get a big tub of popcorn, a big bucket of that pop, sitting and watching a movie. There'd been nothing. But the Lord showed me not to do that. And I go a little bit farther. I used to work for a man. And he's kind of one of them rare back type fellers. You know, if he's got $10 in his pocket, he act like he's worth $10 million. And... Uh, he said, my work hands on Friday, I'll buy them the biggest steak they can eat. I thought, oh boy, Frank, a big old steak. I'll take you up on that. Dinner time come, we went to a place over in Lexington. We went there and sat down on them high stools, I ought to know it anyway. You know, on a little round table like that. I looked over my shoulder, big Budweiser sign, Bud Light. Well, I done ordered that steak. And I tell you what, I could have eat that cheer right there and it tasted this as good. I said, Lord, you let me get out of this place and I'll never be here again. And I've had people, well, you don't have to drink if you go over and get you something good to eat. I'm not going there because the Lord condemned my heart. I'm not saying nothing against nobody else. You work your own salvation out. Uh, hey, we let everybody talk about Sonny's barbecue over there. And I like to eat. Uh, everybody knows. I ain't going to lie to you about that. Boy, I had that barbecue. They talking about that. And I walked in there. Me and Brenda walked up there. I said, let's go. She said, what? Big signs everywhere. Budweiser, natural light. Now, what if I went in there and the Lord had showed me not to go in them places? Now, think about that, folks. And I just overrode that judgment day would have caught me. Now, I'm not preaching against you eat wherever you feel you can eat and you do what you feel to do in life. But I'm talking about my experience. What about your experiences? What's He showed you to do? Well, my wife likes to go over there. You're a servant to whom you obey. If she really loves you and cares about you, she'll understand. Your husband's the same way. Your neighbor, if they really love you and care about you like they say they do, they'll feel the same way. So, you know, not to offend you. It talks about your brother eat meat. You know, everybody knows that. Lord, condemn my heart. That man couldn't have bought me a pile of steaks that high to go back in there. He couldn't have paid me a week's salary because the Lord showed me not to. I ain't getting no material stuff. I feel them by strips clamping down a little bit there. I ain't telling you where to go and where not to go. Lord, Eric might roll me out in the parking lot or something. But I'm talking about my experience. My experience, folks. And you've had experiences with things, and I know people here have. 
and there are things that you can't do. And I respect people for that. Uh, I know people wear long sleeves all the time. Hey, if they want to do that, that's fine. I used to wear them all the time. They're different things. But if God shows you something, folks, you need to do that. And not change your mind regardless. Ruby, whatever He shows you, just hang right on to that. Say, Lord, I'm a serving You. I'm not a servant in this world. They make fun of you. If you try to serve God, you try to present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, surely. Trying to make a change in your life. People will say, look at this, that, or whatever. And us having, us having a human nature in us, we'll be intimidated just a little bit. That's just the truth. But who we're we serving, folks? We're serving a man after a while. We have to sit right in front of us. And I don't care how much far wood you cut, how many nice cakes you've made and took to the winter women, or nothing of that nature. Folks, that's a great and wonderful work. Wonderful. I'm not taking nothing away from that. But he's got a record. He's got a record. You'll be judged accordingly. The books will be open. This book, he'll judge you out of this in the book of life. That judgment seat, we're all facing it after a while. I am. If I come and just preach what you want to hear and he's telling me to preach something else, I have to sit in that chair for doing that. Because I know what to do. I know what to preach. Uh, you know, I never come for a love offering, a pat on the back, or nothing like that. I like to help somebody, Adam. That's my desire to help somebody. If I come down here and condemn your heart through the Word of God, say, I've never heard nobody say that. That's the only way you're ever going to be drawn closer. That's how God saved you. Because He condemns your heart through drawing you to that altar. He condemns your heart that you had lost and undone. Without Him as your Savior. And if I could say something to condemn your heart, and I'm soon winding down, I hope. Or you come to the altar and say, Lord, I want to check myself to see where I'm at. We need that. We need to have a checkup with the Lord about every day, folks. I want to see what my spiritual health is. So I've never heard it put that way. That's just the way it is. You know, a lot of people got that big rule and regulation checkbook there. That ain't no good. This is between you and Him. You make your altar somewhere and He shows you. You do it. Go on down that highway of holiness. Keep on a trucking. It won't be long. He'll show you something else. A little something else. And you do it and you'll not have no trouble. But if you boil up and say, Lord, I, I just ain't going to do it. You let everybody else do it. Woe unto that person. Folks. Come and pray tonight. Come and pray. And as you do pray, look at this chair. Say, Lord, if I sit before you right now, what would I have against me? Or would I have everything took care of? Would I have everything took care of, Lord? Would there be anything holding me back? Come and pray tonight.